Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Ung Studio, and today we're going to be designing and making five Halloween themed earrings on a Glowforge laser cutter. For today's projects, I'm only going to be using the Glowforge Premium interface, which is something that I've never used before. I typically design all of my projects using other software like Rhinoceros and Adobe Illustrator, where I have a little bit more control on the dimensions of all of the things that I'm putting into my designs. Using Glowforge Premium though, you have the ability to add simple shapes like lines, squares, stars, hexagons. You can also add text and you can search for different vectors online and you can engrave or laser cut those vectors. So if you type in a simple search, well, something like a cauldron or a witch's hat, you should be able to find that and import a variety of them into this, the Glowforge interface and then laser cut or engrave it based on what you're looking for. Today's projects were also inspired by two things. The first is a Facebook group that I'm a part of called the Buy Nothing Group, which is probably in your community as well. The Buy Nothing Group focuses on a local neighborhood where people can offer up something that they're looking to throw away, like a couch or some kitchen utensils, a table, something like that. You can also offer to give up things like earrings or your wardrobe or something that you just don't use anymore. You can also go on that group and ask people for something specific. You might be looking for some new spatulas or something like that, and someone would then offer it up and give it to you for free. It's because we're trying to reduce the amount of waste that comes out of our daily lives. So aside from that, the second thing that this project is inspired by is this idea that I have of using all of my scrap materials and reducing the amount of waste that comes out of my projects. So here are some different acrylic pieces that came out of previous projects on my channel. The first is this nice blue acrylic. Right now it has a film on it to protect it from any of the laser cutting and engraving. You'll see that film on a majority of all these different materials that I'm going to show you. But this blue acrylic came from the sapphire light that I recently showed on my channel. The second one is this here, which is a nice frosted white acrylic. And this one came from the tulip light. You can actually see the shape of the tulip here. The next one is this one here, which came from the heart light or the big apple light is what I ended up calling it. You can actually see the heart shape here from the pieces that I cut out. But when you look at the video, some people did tell me it looked like a big apple. So I called it the big apple light because it reminded me of my hometown in New York City. The last one is this one here. And this is a green acrylic. It's for a video that's going to come out in the future and it's going to be for another holiday. And then I'm also going to add in this little piece of purple acrylic. I know you can't see the colors, but you'll see it once I rip off this uh, protective film here at the end of this video to show you what the final products look like. In terms of the tools and materials that I'm going to be using for this project, I'm going to be using my Glowforge laser cutter and I have the basic version of it. If you're in the market for one, you can use the link below in my description for this video where you can save up to $500 on your Glowforge laser cutter. The other thing I'm going to be using are these surgical grade stainless steel ear hooks that actually come with the little pins for the back of the earrings. Once I finish making these projects, I'm actually going to donate it through that Buy Nothing group to people in my local community who might be looking for something like this. It'll help me reduce the amount of waste that I have, but it'll help other people in my community who are looking for something that's custom and unique. Now, before we jump into designing the five different earrings for this project using Glowforge Premium, please remember to support this channel by liking this video and subscribing for more like it. Now with that, let's jump into designing these projects. So this is what my Glowforge interface currently looks like with all of the previous projects that I've cut and shared here on my channel. For today's project, we're going to click on the Create button and click on New Blank Design. Once we're in this interface here, which is the typical interface for Glowforge, you can see some of the premium options up here. One of them is the Insert Shape button, which we're going to use to insert a circle later in this video. There's also the Text button, and if you click on it, it'll drop a text into the Glowforge interface. If you type something here, like they have the your text here, and if we just retype that, you can actually select the, the different kinds of fonts that they have and that they provide for you to use free of charge. So once you're here, there's one that's really interesting that I found really funny as an architect. It's called Architect's Daughter. Don't know what that means, and that doesn't really look like an architect's daughter's handwriting, but let's move past that and get back to this video. So the option we're going to use up here is the plus button up here. 
when you click the import artwork button, you can click up here, and I did it last night, where you can type in something like Halloween. Once you click search, I was really surprised by all of the things that popped up just for that simple search. So for today's project, I'm actually going to use this witch right here. This is going to be one of the things that I import, and I'll show you how I turn this into an earring very quickly. Now that it's in here, there's really no way to change the, the, the size of it except for clicking down here or selecting one of these buttons and making it smaller or larger. You don't have to hold the shift button to uniformly do this because if you hold the shift button, you actually squish that artwork down in whatever direction you're pulling it in. So now that it's squished, I'm going to hold control and press Z just to undo what I did. If you don't know how to use the keyboard functions and you did something like squishing that vector artwork down, you can actually click up here for the undo button and it'll pop her back into place. Now there's this button down here too where you can click on the reposition and resize selected artwork and when you click on that, you can actually change the size of that artwork. I don't want my earrings to be any larger than about 1.25 inches because then it might get a little too large for what I'm looking for and because I'm using my scrap material, I don't really have that much room to play with. So I'm going to click here for the width of it because the width is actually wider than the height of it. And you can see that here where it says 3.605 and 3.079. I'm going to click here at the width and change that to 1.25 and it'll automatically resize the height to match that proportion. Now holding the control button, I'm going to zoom in and click on the witch on a broom again. Now that she's selected, I'll click on the enter settings button just so that you can see what I'll do later. I haven't turned on my Glowforge, so you won't see the material installed. But for now, if I click on this here, and I click on the cut button, and I select any random thing here like PETG, which is a custom setting that I saved, it'll actually turn her red so that you can see that this is the outline I'm cutting out. Now that's perfect for me because you can see it's cutting out the perimeter of that vector artwork. This isn't always going to be the case, so make sure you review it before you actually cut it out. If you simply wanted the outline of something else that didn't give you this perfect outline here, you can click on the artwork, go over to the right side for the premium version of Glowforge, click the Create Outline button, and then if you click this Create New Outline button here, it'll make one that looks really weird because it's actually offsetting the line outwards. It actually looks like a cloud. It's kind of funny to see it this way. But if you click on this here, and you adjust the outline so that the offset is at zero, you'll actually get simply the outline of the shape. But you can see here that it looks weird because the area here, which is where her arms are, is actually not cut out. So now it just looks a little bit off. So because this vector artwork had everything that I wanted it to have, I'm going to delete this outline here, but that's how you would do it for a shape where you simply wanted the outline and nothing inside. So here, for this particular artwork, the only thing I need to do now to turn this into an earring is click on this button up here to insert a shape. I'm going to insert the circle here, and you can see that it's really, really big. I'm going to change the setting just so you can see it better, and I'm going to change it to the PETG setting again. When I'm ready to laser cut this, I'll change it to whatever the material is, but for now, just so you can see everything, I change it to this so it would turn red. Well now, you can see that the circle is really large. I don't need it to be this large because I just need it to be large enough for the hook of the earring to go through a small hole. And I want that hole to be located somewhere on her head up here in her hat. So now I'm going to click on the circle. I'm going to come down here to the scale of it and change it to 0 0.06 inches wide. That'll automatically make it a perfect circle in its height as well. So now I'm going to click and drag that onto her head where I can then install the hook for the earring. And that's pretty much it. This is ready to cut in my Glowforge laser cutter. Later, when I insert the material, I'll see it on this interface, and I can then position where I want to cut her out so that I don't cut any voids in my scrap material. I want to make sure that she's going to be cut out of the entire material. And then I'm also going to make sure that if I have enough space to put multiples of these, I'll just select both at the same time hold control, press C, and then click out of her, and hold control and press V. This will duplicate her with that circle. Now I can cut two of them at the same time anywhere on the board, 
And when I'm done, I can then delete as many of them as I want. So now in the top left here, I'm going to change the name of this to Witch on a Broom. And this will be the first out of four different Halloween themed earrings that I'm going to make. And I actually decided while talking that I want the last one to be a red heart because I have a nice deep red acrylic that I really want to make a heart out of because love is something that we really need in our world now more so than ever. So that's going to be the fifth and last one that I designed to make in this video. And then I'll be donating all of this to my local community. So now let me show you a time lapse of me designing the other items. I just finished designing the five different earrings and I just wanted to show you how all of them came out. Starting with the witch's head that I'm going to be making out of green acrylic, this is how it came out. The lines that you see here shown in purple are actually going to be engraved. The reason why I wanted to keep it is because I thought it added a lot of character to the actual witch's head. If I didn't have it, this is what I would end up with if it were just going to be the outline. It doesn't seem as interesting as having it as part of this entire ensemble here. So I decided to keep it all together and that's what it looks like. Moving on to the next one, here's the witch on a broom that I showed you earlier. I'm going to be making this one out of purple acrylic. The third Halloween themed earring is going to be this ghost that I'm going to be making out of frosted white acrylic. I thought it looked kind of cute to have the eyeballs look like this. As you can see, when I go into here and I type in ghost under search graphics, you'll see that there's so many options. And out of all of these options, I decided that this one was the one that I was going to use. Now moving on to the next one, here's the cat that I'm going to be making out of blue acrylic. I actually struggled with this one a little bit because there are so many versions of cats that I could have used, but ultimately just using the silhouette here, I thought would work out really well with the blue acrylic. The last one that I designed was the heart, which looks more like this, and it's a very, very simple one. I thought it came out really nicely, and it was one of the top options that came out when I typed in hard under the search option for add artwork. It's actually the third one from the left at the top here. So that's how I would design five different earrings using Glowforge Premium's interface. I was surprised by how easy it was to use their software because I've never actually used it in the past. I especially love the fact that you could search for different vector artwork and you can manipulate it using the cut, engrave, and score tools that they provide through their interface. One of the things that I really like about it are the different options that you have when you type anything into that search bar. I also like the fact that you can use the position and scale button at the bottom left of their interface to easily change the proportions of the artwork to whatever you want it to be. Now let's move into the next step of this video where I'll show you how I would laser cut all of the pieces and then uh, install all of the accessories for the earrings. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done.
So that's how I designed and made these five Halloween themed earrings on a Glowforge. The first one is this ghost that I made out of frosted acrylic. The second one is this witch on a witch broom that I made out of purple acrylic. The third one is this witch with a witch hat that I made with green acrylic. The fourth one is this cat that I made out of blue acrylic. And the fifth one is this heart that I made out of a deep red acrylic. Overall, it was actually really easy to use the Glowforge Premium interface, and I was able to design all five of these in less than 10 minutes. I'm sure if I spent more time, I could have gone through a series of different iterations by finding multiples of this ghost here or others. There are so many options to choose from, and I think that's one of the benefits of having the Glowforge Premium membership. I really loved working on this project because the next step for me is to take all of the extra pieces that I have, create some additional earrings, and then list them on that buy nothing group that I was telling you about earlier in this video where I can give them all away to people locally in my community. I love the fact that I could give things like this away instead of having these scraps go to waste. You can see here that I was able to take this one scrap and actually fit so many pieces of the heart onto it or even this one here with the witch and the witch hat. You know, I was able to fit so many pieces on here and now I can give all of these away to people in my community. Let me know what you think about this video by commenting below and remember to support this channel by liking this video and subscribing for more like it.